Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking down the Windows server and migrating everything that was running there, all the services and other servers, over to the Unraid server. I've realized that I'm kind of wasting resources on my Windows server, so that's kind of the uh, whole purpose of this move um, from Windows to Unraid. And we're going to be shutting down the Windows server, not permanently, uh, but there won't be any hard drives available to it anymore. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. And we're also going to rip out any extra RAM and we're going to completely max out the Unraid server. Uh, so I guess without any further waiting, let's go ahead and jump right on in. So I've pretty much already backed up everything I need off of my Windows server, uh, I hope. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and shut it down, uh, not without much remorse here, and call it a day with that. Now the, one of the problems that we're probably going to run into here soon is my Ubuntu, I'm sorry, uh, my Unify controller that runs on my Ubiquiti gear currently runs on a Ubuntu server on the Windows machine. So we're going to have to rebuild that on the Unraid server, um, which shouldn't be too hard to do. At least it wasn't last time. Well, it kind of was. But I think I know what I'm uh, doing, so I should be able to do that again. So, uh, well, that's certainly shut down, so let's go ahead and uh, work with that server. All right, so I'm just... Pretty much sitting back here I'm just gonna rip out all these cables that are plugged in because I no longer need power now I think I am gonna leave the uh, additional NIC cards I have in here in place just in case I decide to do something in the future but for now I'm just gonna rip everything out and we are no longer gonna need it I didn't realize how much stuff was actually plugged into here never really know here start taking some of it apart right all right uh, let's go ahead and move it out now it should slide right on out with nothing preventing it so let's remove this case try to there we go so i'm not sure if i'm going to take these heat sinks off uh, and put them on the other server or not uh, that remains to be seen but for now we're just going to go ahead and start ripping out all of this ram debating whether i should take these ssds out of here from the rear or not i think it was going to be everything so both ssds for the actual operating system are removed I'm pretty sure I'm going to leave the graphics card and these in here for now and take those out later if needed. So let's go ahead and move on. Okay, mistake number one. I turned the Unify controller off a little bit too soon because I actually need that. And because I've been using host names for a while, I don't actually know the IP address of my Unraid server. So I can't uh, access the web GUI to shut it down nice and, nice and easy. Um, so what I have done, because I know the... Uh, I don't know, the, the router's IP address. I've SSH into the um, Unify router, router? Ugh, I cannot speak, the Unify router, and I did a, a command called show ARP, and it gives me a list of all the IP addresses currently active on the network. So I don't know specifically which one is, um, is the Unraid server, but I do know that it is more than likely between seven and 12, uh, just because, I don't know, maybe some false memory I have somewhere. So I'm, I'm actually just going to start with dot .12. Oh, sweet. Talk about luck of the draw. So I know you guys probably can't see this too well, um, but basically I'm just going to have to stop Unraid here um, so we can add more RAM to it and we can add uh, more hard drives to it. So I believe I have to stop the RAID first. Uh, or I'm sorry, not the RAID. I have to stop the array first. All right, so now that the array is stopped, I can power down the system and it beeped at me, which scared the hell out of me, but we should be good to go now. All right, let's go ahead and crack the Unraid server open. And there we go. Take out all these plastic pieces real quick that are protecting the RAM slots. And we're going to upgrade the snap out of this server. All right, all these things are removed. So let's go ahead and start adding the RAM stick by stick. Boom, baby. It's completely full. All right, so I just had this thought while I was putting all this RAM in here. I'm actually going to take out the CPUs and replace them. These are 2650 version 1 CPUs. Inside of the Windows server is 2670v1s. And I'm going to swap them out because I actually want my Unraid server to have a slight speed boost since it's going to be doing the majority of work now. And I'm also going to stop using the cache drive as a, a scratch drive for Plex. Now that I have more RAM, I'm actually going to use my RAM uh, for Plex while it does all the transcoding. Shouldn't see a difference, but I got plenty of RAM, so why ruin the drive? 
All right, so we are going to take these copper heat sinks as well, and we are going to take the CPUs as well, something I originally didn't intend to do, but you know, or you may know, my shenanigans by now. I just kind of do things on the fly. All right, let's go ahead and remove these CPUs and prepare them for transplant into the other server. All right, not too bad. And since I have all of these, I think I'm just gonna stick them in here anyway. Not that they're needed by any means. All right, off we go. Whoa, whoa. No need for all that crashing. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and remove these heat sinks. All right, both heat sinks are removed, so we're gonna clean these off. Now that both CPUs are clean and heat sinks. We are going to make a swap of the 2650s with the 2670s. So I know that they're supposed to line up some magic way, but I never figured it out. I would just kind of drop them in and get lucky. Oh, put that in incorrectly. Unlatch, unlatch. Grab the CPU. Grab the new CPU, place it in gently, close the latch. Boom, both CPUs are swapped. Okay, so now that CPUs are in, we're just gonna add a little bit of thermal compound. This is Arctic Silver, of course. What else is there? And now we just have to stick on the heat sinks themselves. All right, both uh, heat sinks are in place. We just get rid of the old ones real quick. At least get them out of the way. Okay, so the next big thing that we have to decide is what we're gonna do with the cache. So the cache drive currently is a Samsung 250 gigabyte hard drive. Do I wanna replace that with two of these? Or, I think these are 100 and, or these are 240 each. Or do I wanna replace the crap, <laughs> the crap, the crash, crash cache drives with one of these? I'm thinking maybe I should use these instead and then use these for virtual machines. Uh, I think that's the best plan because I have two of these as well. And these are 480 ter terabytes, gigabytes each. I don't even know where the second one is. So I have a problem when, there it is. So probably do that. So two of these will be for virtual machines. I'm gonna make these our new cache drives. I'm gonna get rid of the Samsung one. Uh, the Samsung one, I will maybe just keep as like a side drive for other projects, maybe for the previous server. And then these will be for virtual machines or I don't know, other stuff. So we'll figure that out. Get this off. Ooh. Um, I should probably mount that a little bit better next time. All right, so the first drive literally is not being held down by anything except gravity itself. And it is in place. And the second drive, which is being held down by a screw, I am trying to push in right now. And that one fits, but only barely. I can't think of anything, so I am just gonna go ahead and close this back up. And we will power it on and add a whole bunch of new drives to the array. All right, before we actually move on, I am gonna reinstall these other heat sinks before I forget. All right, cool. So this server, oh crap, I gotta pull it all the way out to put the lid back on. If I can, seems to be a little stuck. And I pulled it off the rail. Perfect. Just like last time. This isn't gonna work. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay, cool. Definitely got it back on. Whew, that was a close one. All right. Okay, good enough. So the entire back plane is actually supported by two different types of controllers. There's an Intel controller and an LSI storage controller. So that's why I'm gonna put all of the SSDs on this side because this half, like maybe this many drives, I'm not entirely sure, is controlled by the Intel storage controller, which coincidentally also the two SSDs on the rear are controlled by the same controller. So that is my reasoning for why I'm putting them over here. Does it really make a difference? Probably not because Unraid doesn't really deal with raids anyway. But just for consistency sakes, I think it'll help me in the long run. All right, well, SSDs are installed. Um, all the previous drives, I think I'm just gonna leave in here as kind of like legacy drives because I don't use them anyway. So I can still play around with those if I need to. 
So I had originally intended to actually show you guys the process of, you know, Unray booting up, adding the hard drives to the array, and then some of the problems that I occurred, but the video footage I recorded as well as uh, screen captured came out very blurry and I was missing parts of it for some reason. So I think I ran out of space on my camera, which I should really look into because that's been happening a lot to me lately. But for now, that's besides the point. So I did end up getting everything added to the array. There was a problem that I ran into where one of the disks wasn't being discovered. So I just replugged everything back in, made sure it was nice or seated nice and tight. Got everything added, Unray booted up fine. I installed Ubuntu server like I had it originally intended. Uh, that went off without a hitch. And I do have the video footage for that, but it's again, very blurry and you can't really see everything. Then I also got the Unify controller and Unify video installed on the Ubuntu server as well. So after all of that was finished, I then had a problem with one of my hard drives. Listen to this. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. But luckily I got a replacement drive in and was able to add it back to the server and back to the array and everything went off from there without a hitch until a little bit later on. So just when you finish getting Unraid back up and running and everything working just fine, you get another failed hard drive. Now, it's not really Western Digital's fault that these hard drives are failing. It's actually my fault because as you may have seen from the previous video or the previous videos, uh, I did bang around these uh, these hard drives a lot, or maybe not the hard drives, but the servers were getting banged around a lot because I was, you know, putting equipment on there or moving equipment. So I got a replacement hard drive in uh, from Western Digital, and uh, all we have to do is add this back to my array. And this one shouldn't take too long. It's only a terabyte hard drive, uh, so yeah, okay, let's go ahead and do it. All right, so I already got the uh, Western Digital Red Drive replaced. I don't remember if I even showed that or not in the last video. Uh, but basically, it was just as easy as popping it in there, just like this, and then configuring it in Unraid. So let's go do that real quick as well. Okay, so obviously you can see the disk is not installed. Uh, Unraid does not see it. Um, so all we have to do is stop the array. It should only take a moment. All right, so now we're just going to assign that disk. It's the only one in there that is not assigned, so it's a pretty easy fix. And then we just start the array, and we are pretty much done. So that'll automatically get rebuilt uh, or cleaned and cleared and, all, and formatted uh, by Unraid, so we don't really have to do much from here. Uh, the parity will do its thing to rebuild this drive as necessary, and we're pretty much done. This video probably would have been a lot longer had I recorded all the issues I was experiencing. I didn't do that because it's really a time factor. I could record every really, every little thing and put it into one ginormous video, uh, but that takes forever and then I've got to edit it and that takes even longer. I just didn't feel like it. But some of the problems I did end up having was my internet went down for some reason and I couldn't figure out why. I called my service provider and they're like, oh, we see your modem online, everything looks fine. But then it turns out that my ups was actually bad. So I have a coax line that comes from my ISP that goes into my UPS uh, to protect it from surges. And then that coax line goes to my modem and that's how I es essentially get internet from my ISP. Well, all of that was working, but then when it goes back from ethernet cable to my ups, there was a problem with that port. So after switching it to one of my other UPSs, uh, everything ended up turning out fine, I had internet again, and then my router decided to start acting up. So I'm not sure if it was because the multiple modem and router reboots or what happened, but my my, my access point, my Linksys router, uh, it's, it's actually an access point, not a router right now. That ended up actually breaking for some reason, so I had to reset that. And then the other hard drive failed, and I had to wait for a replacement for that. So it was it was a multitude of problems that ended up being like this crazy mess. And I've even, I haven't even mentioned the RAM issues I had. Unraid was running for a little while, and as and it would just suddenly crash uh, pretty much randomly, and I couldn't figure out why, mainly because I didn't look at log files or anything like that like I should have, but it turns out that I had not just one bad stick of RAM, not just two bad sticks of RAM, but four bad sticks of RAM. It took me forever to figure out what the problem was, or not really what the problem was, but which, which RAM sticks were bad. It took... It probably took a solid two days. I don't even remember how long it took 
to be honest, but it's, it felt like it took forever. So I had to steal RAM from the other server and then put that into the Unraid server so I could have my full 192 gigabytes of RAM. And yeah, you know, do I need 192 gigabytes of RAM on my Unraid server? No, not really, but I did it anyway. So now my other server is offline because I don't have RAM. I might buy some more or just steal some from Unraid. I don't really know what I'm going to do with that just yet. I, I barely even have a use for it now. Um, but we'll see. You know, there's there's plenty of things that we could do in the future to kind of play around with that. And uh, there are some things that I, I want to do to explore Plex a little bit more and improve my overall streaming experience, even though it's actually been very good this entire time anyway. So after all of that being said and done, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.